We have a particle that's moving with a given velocity, and it's in an interval from time equals 0 to time equals 6. We want to find the displacement of the particle between time equals 0 and 6, and also the total distance traveled by the particle between time 0 and 6. Now we can recall that if we have a function d of t, say, that represents the displacement or the position of the particle at time t, then the first derivative of that displacement function is the velocity function. The second derivative of the displacement function, also the first derivative of the velocity function, is then the acceleration function. In this problem, we're not asked for acceleration, so I'm gonna get rid of this one, and we're gonna use this fact right here. Now, if the derivative of displacement is velocity, then that means that the integral of velocity will give us our displacement maybe plus some constant. And if we wanna find the total displacement of a particle between two specific values of t, we can use a definite integral. And this is the one that we're gonna to use to find the first part of the question, the total displacement of the particle between t equals zero and t equals six. We can plug our velocity function into this formula and then we can integrate with respect to time the integral of 4 is 4t the integral of negative 2t is negative t squared and we're going to evaluate that between 0 and 6 that means we plug in the upper limit of integration and subtract what we get when we plug in the lower limit of integration I'm getting 24 minus 36 or negative 12 is my answer and what this result means is that when time equals 6 seconds particle ends up 12 units left of where where it started at time equals zero. And to give us an idea of how that may have happened, let's look at the velocity function. If we graph our velocity function, four minus two t, we know that this has a y-intercept of four and a slope of negative two. And when the velocity of a particle is positive, as it is between time equals zero and two, that means that particle is moving to the right. When the velocity of a particle is negative, that means that that particle is moving to the left. So what happened to this particular particle is at time equals zero, it started moving to the right. And then the velocity slowed down and it moved more slowly and more slowly until it stopped after two seconds. Then the particle is moving left from two seconds until six seconds. And eventually, as we calculated here, the particle ends up 12 units to the left of where it had started. Now I think understanding this point is important for the next part of the problem because the next part of the problem asks us to find the total distance traveled and I believe that you'll agree now that this particle starts by traveling to the right some distance. We don't know how far but for two seconds it travels to the right. Then it turns around and it comes back and the particle crosses the point at which it started and then moves left 12 more units. So how are we going to find the total distance that the particle traveled? Well, there's a couple ways to do it, but to do the problem in the most calculusy way, we should make this point right here. If we extend this velocity line to time equals 6, what we found in the first part of this problem was the area under this curve minus the area under this part of the curve. This area turned out to be negative 12 because this area under the curve was 12 units bigger than the area above the curve. But the total distance traveled represents this area here plus this area right here. In other words, the total distance traveled is the integral from zero to six of the absolute value of the velocity function. And as we learned in some of the previous videos, we can split up an integral of an absolute value of a function into two pieces. One piece where the function is positive, in this case from zero to two, and the other piece where the function is negative, in this case from two to six, and then we put a negative sign on any of those pieces of the integral where the function is negative. That will then give us a positive number for this answer here, a positive number for this answer here, and we'll be done. So let's actually complete that calculation. I plugged in the function here, and now I'm integrating. Now I'm going to plug in my upper limits of integration and subtract what we get when we plug in the lower limits of integration. And again, this negative sign here is going to cancel with a negative sign in this second part of the fundamental theorem of calculus here. We'll get a plus on this term. And let's see what we end up with when we do the numbers. I'm getting four plus 12 plus another four. I'm getting a total distance traveled of 20 units. And I think that's going to do it for this problem. Let me zoom out so you can see everything that happened there.